Hi, this is Dr. Karthik Manchala. Let us discuss tuberculosis of the musculoskeletal system. This tuberculosis is most commonly secondary, secondary to tuberculosis elsewhere in the body. The most common site number one is the lung and the second most common number two is the lymph node, lymph node, lung and lymph node. And from here, how does the infection come to the musculoskeletal system? It is via the hematogenous root hematogenous root that is your bloodstream now when i say tuberculosis is the musculoskeletal system the most common to me involved is the spine followed by the hip followed by the knee spine hip and knee in that order from above to below okay then some peculiar points some specific features tuberculosis of the shoulder is dry it is called as caries sicca and tuberculosis of the short bones of the hand has a peculiar feature of periosteal reaction The term used is spina ventosa. Okay, so and the lesions of the tuberculosis in the bone is posse bacillary. Posse bacillary. Okay, so these are some specific specific features pertaining to bone tuberculosis. Okay, so as quickly revise it lungs greater than lymph nodes are the primary sites the spread is hematogenous the lesions are posse bacillary and spine it is called as pot spine the hip and the knee in that order from above to below the order of involvement and in the shoulder it is caries sicca and in the digits it is spina ventosa the feature of periosteal reaction this does not happen with tuberculosis of the rest of the bones okay so moving on to the topic of discussion that is tuberculosis of the spine now which part of the spine is most commonly involved it is a dorsal and the lumbar region which is most commonly involved but let us see uh, depending on the options given in the exam if dorso lumbar is the option given you will go for it followed by dorsal followed by lumbar and followed by dorso lumbar junction because the junction involves less number of vertebrae okay so the most common spine affected in children is cervical spine some more mcqs rarest joint in children temporomandibular rarest musculoskeletal structure is bursa and in case of a bursa is involved it is your trochanteric bursa trochanteric bursa so let's move on to the types of spinal tuberculosis types of spinal tuberculosis number one is paradiscal the disc and the vertebra above and the vertebra below is involved as the name says it is paradiscal central central the center of the vertebral body is involved anterior the infection spreads along the anterior longitudinal ligament and involves the vertebra from above to below okay so this is anterior type of tuberculosis now this can be confused with an aneurysm in the x-ray okay so and posterior tuberculosis which is rare involving the spinous process the pedicles and facet joints are the rarest to be involved okay some mcqs regarding this is paradiscal is the most common presentation and anterior is the most common in children and central posterior the rarest involved is the facet joint facet joint so that is the order of frequency so let's discuss regarding the paradiscal lesion so if this is a vertebra above and this is the one below and this is the intervening disc 
and this is the blood supply to it so the tuberculosis characteristically involves the disc along with the lower part of the upper vertebra and the upper part of the lower vertebra and the disc is anyways involved so this is your paradiscal type of involvement now why does this happen because they have a common blood supply now why does this happen because they arise from a same mesodermal somite mesodermal somite okay so that is why paradiscal lesion occurs and it is very common okay and tuberculosis is most commonly anterior disease involving vertebral bodies discs anterior disease because everything happens is most commonly anterior to the spinal cord okay so so this is the vertebral body this is the vertebral body these are your posterior structures and here is where the entire problem happens so clinically as yes, constitutional like low grade fever night pain decreased appetite weight loss and recently this constitutional symptoms may or may not be seen so it is the local findings which we depend upon pain yes the earliest symptom this again is an mcq muscle spasm or tenderness is the earliest sign this again is an mcq cautious gait or military attitude because any movement any slightest movement of the spine gives excruciating pain to the patient just to avoid movements between the segments of the spine the patient does this cautious gait or military attitude and cold abscess cold abscess the destroyed the destroyed vertebral body the destroyed bone the dead tuberculous bacilli all come out in the form of an abscess the cold abscess that is cold because it lacks the specific features of an abscess it is not red it is not hot that is why it is cold abscess now this can track along musculoskeletal structures and become palpable superficially that is when you can see cold abscess clinically okay so this is a cold abscess so let us discuss the deformities of the spine number 1 is a sharp deformity when you can feel only one bony prominence and that is called as knuckle number 2 is a two to three bony prominences are felt when you call it a gibbous and number 3 is more than 3 3 or more than 3 uh, bony prominences are felt when you call it an angular kyphosis deformity some more mcqs most common cause of kyphosis in a male in india is tuberculosis and overall is osteoporosis overall is osteoporosis how do you diagnose tuberculosis of spine the investigation of choice would be your mri because you can see the bone you can see the soft tissue you can see the neural structures but but again biopsy is the gold standard gold standard and here a ct guided biopsy would be helpful you go through the pedicle put in a needle get some tissue from the lesion this is just a representational image get some tissue and send it for the necessary cultures x ray here would show a triad a triad of disc space narrowing as you can see the disc space is completely lost in between these two vertebrae paravertebral abscess called as bird's nest abscess Yes, as you can see here, a bird's nest abscess and lysis of the vertebra, damage or lysis of the vertebra. As you can see here, the vertebra is completely lysed or damaged. Okay, so these are the radiological features. Okay, uh, uh, let's discuss a term called as ankylosis. Ankylosis is nothing but a fusion, a fusion of a joint. Now this is of two types, bony. a bony ankylosis when the two bones are joined by bony bridges other type is the fibrous ankylosis when the two bones are joined by fibrous tissue fibrous tissue now what is the difference the difference is that okay uh in 
bony fusion there is absolutely no movement between the two bones so a bony fusion is painless in fibrous fusion in fibrous ankylosis you can still have a jog of movement a jog of movement so this is painful in tuberculosis in specifically tuberculosis bony fusion or bony ankylosis occurs in spine and fibrous union or fibrous ankylosis occurs in hip and knee there are other conditions where bony fusion occurs that is your septic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis whereas in fibrous fibrous ankylosis tuberculosis of hip and knee as discussed and rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis okay so what can also happen in pot spine or tuberculosis of spine is pot paraplegia the involvement of neurological structures which we do not do not want okay so how do you define it compression of spinal cord because of disease process resulting neurological symptoms is your pot paraplegia okay so why is upper thoracic tuberculosis most common site for pot paraplegia because the spinal canal here is of lesser diameter and the spinal cord here is of greater diameter so there is not much vacant space here so any decrease in the space would lead to a paraplegia okay that is the reason why upper thoracic tuberculosis is most commonly the site of pots paraplegia okay so there are two types depending upon the cause so this either an early onset paraplegia or a late onset paraplegia and early onset paraplegia is caused by granulation tissue or abscess or vascular thrombosis or ischemia but early onset is good because you can always remove the cause very easily a late onset is because of a deformity of the spine it is very difficult to remove that so late onset is bad okay then the earliest neurological sign is ankle clonus or deep tendon reflexes is an extensor plantar reflex okay these are mcq stars multiple multiple times these are as you know an upper motor neuron manifestation what are late manifestations flaccid paralysis bubble and bladder involvement okay so let's look at the prognostic factors of pots paraplegia okay better and poor the degree sir you would be given a mix and match combination of these and ask whether it is good or bad so if the partial cord is involved it is better if complete cord is involved it is poor this is understandable okay so duration of cord involvement the shorter is better and longer is poor understandable speed of onset slow onset has a better prognosis and rapid onset has a poor prognosis then early onset is better as we discussed poor is late onset age the younger the patient the better the prognosis older the poor understandable the general condition good and poor understandable if the vertebral disease is active it is better if the vertebral disease is healed that indicates that the paraplegia is because of deformity it is again bad as we discussed the kyphotic deformity less than 60 and greater than 60 degrees on mri if the cord is normal it is better if the cord is already showing changes of myelomalacia then it is bad okay then intraoperatively if the lesion is wet that indicates that this disease is active and dry indicates a healed disease okay so how do you treat tuberculosis of spine by dr sm tulis regimen called as middle path regimen middle path regimen you start with anti tuberculous drugs expected duration of treatment is 18 to 24 months give them rest give them tailor's brace and do surgery only if it is necessary now when is it necessary when there is bubble or bladder involvement 
any disease of spine when there is bowel and bladder involvement you go for surgical intervention okay and the second is when there is worsening of the symptoms the patient came with x symptoms and the symptoms have worsened and if there is no improvement in three to six weeks these are the indications of surgery now when i say surgery what is the surgery the most commonly done is antero lateral decompression antero lateral decompression now what are the structures removed in antero lateral decompression number one your rib the transverse process pedicle and part of the vertebral body now why is it called antero lateral because this is the spinal cord which is decompressed from anterior and lateral the structures present anterior and lateral to the spinal cord are removed to provide decompression so it is called as antero lateral decompression another surgery called costo transvasectomy is there which is used only for temporary decompression temporary decompression okay so let us discuss a small sign which is called as winking owl sign winking owl sign so if you look at a normal vertebra the two pedicles look like the two eyes of an owl the two pedicles look like two eyes of an owl the spinous process looks like the nose of an owl okay so when metastasis involves a posterior element one or both pedicles may be destroyed for example like here you can see the nose you can see one eye but the other eye is not seen which is called as winking owl sign it looks as if the owl is winking and if both the pedicles are destroyed it is called as blind bat sign blind bat sign thank you